Peter Stump, Werewolf of Bedburg. Peter Stump was a serial killer and a cannibal, dubbed the Werewolf of Bedburg, during the 16th century. His murders were performed in a gruesome and inhuman way. He ravaged the body parts, ripped out the internal organs, chopped off the arms and legs, and in some cases ate the unborn child inside a woman's body. His favorites were children, infants, women, and even livestock. Peter Stump was a farmer in the small community of Bedburg, in Cologne, Germany, a city that was still a part of the Holy Roman Empire at the time. There is some confusion as to Stump's real name, with the variations of Stub or Stump. Since it is believed to be coined due to the fact that his left hand was severed, some references state that his real name was Griswold. Stump was a respected figure of the community, apparently because of his incredible wealth and influence. His date of birth was unknown, but it is hypothesized that by 1580, his wife had already died, and he had two children, one girl and one boy. Stump and his family lived in a time when there were conflicts between the Catholics and Protestants. The armies of both parties would meet in the heart of Bedburg, and encounters would usually leave casualties. Also, it was during that era when there was a large epidemic caused by the Black Plague. Conflict and death were not uncommon in the region where Stump lived. To his fellow villagers, Stump was a very wealthy and decent man who lived with both his children and was sometimes visited by some of his relatives. However, the truth was he had an intimate relationship with one of his kin, and he constantly abused his daughter. The father-daughter incestuous relationship eventually resulted in the birth of a baby boy. Despite the frequency of death and devastation in the area, one specific case arose the worry of the already anxious citizens. There were several deaths of livestock, especially cattle, and eventually deaths of humans. At first, they thought that they were caused by an enormous wolf. The guts were usually ripped out and the other body parts chopped up and even spread around in different places. For 25 years, Stump wore a wolf skin above his head. Those who have seen a glimpse of him described him as a wolf-like creature with huge eyes, wide mouth, sharp teeth, massive paws, and a large and strong body frame. The killings continued for years, and at some point, people would travel through towns in groups or in wagons laden with weapons. Sometimes they would find severed body parts of the werewolf's victims in fields and forests. Stump's attacks were varied, and he seemed not to care if his prey was an animal or a human. His victims were livestock. Stump seemed to have taken a liking to cattle and cows. The farmers feared for the life of their livestock, because they would often randomly find their cattle dead in the fields. The cattle would lay on the ground, mutilated and viciously ripped open by some large and savage creature. Smaller animals, like lambs and calves, were usually ripped open and apparently devoured raw, since their organs were often missing. The attacks lasted for years and years. At first... They suspected the attacks were from a large pack of wolves, but they never thought that a human, Peter Stump, was capable of the deeds. His attacks on the livestock were believed to have been fueled by Stump's desire to murder people, too. Stump murdered both men and women, but more of the latter. For young women... He first raped and abused them before he took their lives. Stump would then tear them apart. 
One case involved the killing of two men and a woman who were strolling outside the city. Stump was crouched behind the dark bushes which completely hid him. He then pretended to call for help. The young man came to his aid, and when he did, Stump forcefully smashed his head with a large rock. Curious why his friend still hadn't returned, the other man went behind the bushes where he too was killed. The woman, who was shaking with fear, tried to run away, but to no avail. She was also killed, but her body was never found, unlike the other two. Some hypothesized that Stump might have raped then killed the woman. On why her body was never recovered, it is assumed that Stump ate her completely. In the course of Stump's slaughters, he murdered two pregnant women. After killing the women, Stump slashed their stomachs open and ripped the fetuses out of their mother's body with his bare hands. He would then proceed to eat the still-beating heart of the infant. According to Stump himself, he liked the taste of the hot and raw hearts of the infants, and he described them as exquisite snacks. When children disappeared from the farms and homes, their family would often assume that there was no chance that they would see their offspring alive. Dead children with excessively mutated body parts were not an uncommon sight. Some of the children were not even found. The children were strangled to death, beaten, and their throats were ripped open by using bare hands or claws, according to the villagers. Some of their bodies had the stomach ripped open, and their intestines and internal organs were partially eaten. In one case, the child was fortunate enough to survive the attack of the werewolf. According to her, she was just playing with her friends in the meadows among some cows and their calves, when a large creature or man came after them. Stump eventually got hold of her, and he tried to gash the child's throat with his hands. Luckily, the child was wearing a high collar, and she had the chance to cry for help. The cows heard the girl's cries, and it startled them. The cattle then went after Stump. Another notable case of Stump slaughter was that of his own family. The result of the incestuous relationship of Stump and his daughter, Belle, was a baby boy. Upon interrogation, Stump admitted that he killed his own son. He detailed that he led his young son deep into the forest, beat him to death, and ate his brains raw. The villagers were certain that a ravaging animal, most probably a wolf, was on the loose. It caused numerous livestock deaths and deaths of women, children, and infants. Hunters set out to capture the animal, so they coursed the forest with dogs in pursuit of the culprit. According to one hunter, they apparently chased and cornered a large wolf but it changed into Peter Stump in front of their eyes. This side of the story is disputed, and the supposed transformation was just Peter Stump taking off his wolf hide. The hunters could not believe their eyes because Stump was a respectable man in the community. Nevertheless, he was brought to trial. During the trial... Stump told the authorities that at age twelve he made a pact with the devil. Their deal was that he would sell his soul in exchange for earthly pleasures. However, Stump described himself as a wicked person who liked destruction, blood, and cruelty. So the devil gave him a belt that enabled him to transform into a werewolf, whose main goal was to kill and eat humans. He confessed to killing the farmers, livestock, mutilating the young and unborn children, and sexually abusing women, then murdering them. He also admitted that he was in a relationship with his daughter, his relative, and a female demon. The witnesses stated that Stump had the habit of walking through the town streets, 
and greeting the families and friends of his victims, who had no idea that the wealthy farmer had caused their beloved's death. In the end, Peter Stump admitted to having killed fourteen children, two pregnant women and two fetuses, during the twenty-five years before he was caught. Of the fourteen children, one was his own child. The number of murders in that time was far beyond the number that Stump confessed, and the authorities believed that those were also his doing. On October 28, 1589, Stump was found guilty of all the murders that he confessed to. His daughter and his mistress were also found guilty for being accomplices to the crimes. The three of them were sentenced to death three days after, on All Hallows' Eve of 1589. On October 31st, 1589, the execution of Stump was noted as one of the most brutal executions in history. His body was laid and strapped on a wheel in a spread-eagled position. Metal pinchers were heated until they were red-hot and flesh from ten different parts of his body were slowly pulled off his bones. His arms and legs were a hit with the blunt end of an axe to break them completely and prevent him from crawling out of his grave. All of this was done while he was still alive. To finally kill him, he was beheaded and his body was burnt in a big bonfire in the town square. His daughter and his mistress were also publicly executed and burnt on stakes beside Stump's body. The magistrate ordered a warning potential worshippers of the devil to be erected on the site of Stump's execution. The wheel used to kill Stump was set on a high pole. Sixteen strips of wood were hung to represent all his victims. The body of a wolf was placed on the very top and above it. Stump's severed head was put in place of the animal's head. Professional Analysis Hundreds of years after Peter Stump's killing spree, psychologists hypothesized that he was actually suffering from clinical lycanthropy, a kind of schizophrenic condition wherein a person experiences random bouts of neurosis, delusions, slurred and incoherent speech, and inappropriate and disordered behavior. Peter Stump's behavior can be explained as lycanthropic attacks, wherein he lost his reason and eventually lost his mind. People who experience lycanthropy are people whose fears exceed their mechanisms of coping, which in turn makes them project their fears onto other people. 